The dawn of civilization. Primitive. Dangerous. Exciting. The handwriting is on the wall. If the human race is ever going to amount to anything, it needs... The most civilized caveman I have ever seen. Ah, oh, look who's come out of his cave. Hey everyone, thank you for tuning in. This is James from Cave Dweller Music. I'm joined by my co-host Brendan. Today we have a San Diego act with us, someone that I've actually seen live twice and I'm really happy to have them on the show. Thank you for coming on Negative Blast. Uh, welcome to the show. Hey, thanks for having us. Anytime. Uh, for anyone who doesn't know your music, do you want to just sort of tell them a little bit about who you are, uh, what you do in the band and what the band's all about? Sure. Yeah, uh, my name's Rain or Rainier is my, is my uh, first name fully. Um, I'm the vocalist in the band. Uh, I'm Alex. I play guitar. Mm -hmm. So pretty much like, man, we were playing together at kind of the height of the pandemic. Um, Alex is, had actually been a, a longtime friend of mine and, and we worked together in, in his studio um, I was one of his first clients, if not the first client that he had when he started his uh, record, like recording career. And so we had recorded bands like over a span of like 10 years. And at the height of all the all the COVID stuff, like I was just kind of chatting with him here and there to just like, you know, connect, reconnect and just be able to share ideas, music ideas and one of these days on, on Facebook Messenger, I was just like, yo, I want to yell in a band again. And then Alex was just like, I got riffs. So then we we met up and we started jamming. And two weeks after that, not too long after maybe our second practice, Pat, the bass, our ba our current, our ba our bass player right now, he uh joined the band like two weeks into him moving from Chicago. And oh, wow. Alex said like this, like, here's my friend. He just moved. Like it might be a great fit. And we clicked like right away. And to kind of describe what the, what the sound of the music is, I would liken that, that to like what Pat would say. He's like, it's like psych rock, but he meant like psycho rock. Like it's just this sort of maniacal fucking grooving, driving yet bouncy brand of, of punk music that we, we, we tended to just like, be able to voice our frustrations with how things are going and just even just like offer like a way to a, a sort of catharsis for for daily life and that that's pretty much what we got going on right now and i mean there's a lot of stuff even within that and we we got mario in on the band through um through just reaching out to him on instagram and uh it was sort of the, the band has kind of taken on like a, a a certain place in our our lives where it's just like we're just kind of we're we're, we're just like putting stuff out there throwing shit at the wall and and seeing what what sticks and and just running with it and just having fun yeah we we famously have no plan ever and it's going great <laughs> <laughs> we're you Why know your pants <laughs> Neither of us surf, but you know we know how to ride a wave. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> so I mean, last year was it last year that your album came out? No, that was this year, February, wasn't it? Um, you dropped the album Echo Planet. Mm -hmm. Yep, I uh, loved it. By the way, just yeah, killer stuff. Great release. Thanks so much. Uh, just the monster riffs and just so much groove. Thanks a lot. Yeah, thanks. I think there was there's a lot of focus on just making stuff. Yeah, fun to listen to and I don't know, move your body to whether that be, you know, launching yourself into your friend or just, you know, grooving around. Mm -hmm. uh, that's kind of the goal. It's just like, actually, I think I personally spent so much time trying to make some music that was considered smart or something. And then I realized how dumb that was. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> I'm just trying to like, you know, fun stuff. Yeah. I, uh, we, oh, go ahead. Sorry. Oh, I was just going to say, like, sometimes when we would jam, we would kind of use a certain like venue in San Diego as like a litmus test. We're like, all right, can we play this at Tower Bar? Like in, in a capacity <laughs> of any kind, whether it's like packed or whether it's just like whatever, like all good. Like, can we 
it, can we enjoy ourselves playing it in a place like that? And that's, right. that's sort of been the thing, just like, can we have fun playing these songs and just like output everything to the max, like to, to the maximum effort of, of our capacity at the time? And, and can we have fun doing it? And as someone who's seen you live twice, I'll say that you definitely bring that energy live, 100%. Oh, yeah. 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 It's, uh, people are definitely moving. People are enjoying it. Like, for an opening band, you bring a lot of energy. You know, sometimes you go to a shower and the opening band, it's like, yeah, they're all right. No one in the room is really feeling it. They kind of just stand there and do the kind of like clap to be polite. Uh, but <laughs> you guys get people into it. Uh, people are moving even for an opening act. So it's awesome. Yeah, thank you so much for that. And, and of course, like sometimes like there there are times where we're 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 in the intensity of playing and like I I, I just kind of look out or peek out, whether it's a small venue like the Tower Bar or Che Cafe over here in San Diego. And then we played at the freaking Anaheim House of Blues very recently with Finch wow. and just kind of looking over the crowd and like kind of seeing a general gauge of faces and just like people enjoying themselves or just people focused on on our movements or what how we're like how we're going about with our set like it's always it's always just a very humbling experience to be able to to have opportunities to share to people you know um what was the house of blues like i didn't know that you guys played there dude yeah it was fucking it was nuts it was yeah. like in the newer house of blues where they have like four stages i got lost like looking for the bathroom mm -hmm. yeah it was it was cool i mean it, it was definitely a a different experience than what we're used to I, like when we when we pulled in you know just from something as simple as we pulled in with our gear and we we're just kind of like hey where do we go and we called our point of contact and they're like oh i'll send someone down just thinking they were gonna send someone to like you know come show us where to put our stuff and whatever but you know at these bigger venues they have like crews of people that this is their job and i at first i like felt bad handing them gear like i was like pawning them off my friends <laughs> you know and then afterwards they were like no just give us the stuff this is our job i'm like oh this is, this is pretty cool man <laughs> all right but uh so it was a it, we got to we got to take a little vacation into like you know luxury and uh but it was fun it was it's crazy to play to that many people i don't think i've ever done it yeah yeah we opened up for finch on their what it is to burn anniversary of things like their 20th year anniversary of the album and i grew up listening to finch like they they had they made impact because like my sister made a mix cd with finch songs on it and she'd be singing it and i'm like what how did this music get get because like my sister's generally into like whatever's in kind of thing and she was just playing finch and i'm like what is this this is cool yeah and and you know being a fan of it but also having a band with like almost like i wouldn't say diametrically opposed sound i would say like our sound was different in the sense that it still fit the intensity of what finch can put out but like in terms of like like our, our riffs and our song structures and everything it was cool playing to a crowd that like I, I generally otherwise like not would have had the experience to 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 play to and like people we, we started seeing like little mini pits and stuff like happening <laughs> like yeah like within the crowd and stuff it's like sick yeah it was cool awesome um in San Diego, have you guys ever played the uh, Till Two? Yep. Yeah. Our uh, second, sh third show was there. Third show, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Nice. I did shrooms. I, uh, you did shrooms? Yeah. <laughs> How did that go? It, it went really well, actually. <laughs> yeah, really well. I was like, wow, I feel like I'm just so open and yelling these things <laughs> into the mic. I mean, the 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 vocal the vocal monitor kind of blew out or something yeah. so they had to turn around the 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 stage monitor yeah i think that i think the mains blew up yeah and like two songs into our set so we just had to flip the the monitor around yeah. um cool spot very 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 compact stage which mm -hmm. can be <laughs> yeah yeah that's why i was asking because the stage is like the size of like a toilet <laughs> it's yeah. so small cool. <laughs> yeah my my stupid friends that gave me the shrooms were so dumb and they brought like some beer into the the club and they got they they were like yo like the bartenders were like yo you better get the fuck out if you're gonna be doing that and then they went down the street to like a vietnamese karaoke hangout spot that like a lot of the like the 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 locals in in the area frequent and they were just like yeah. singing david bowie and elvis songs <laughs> i know the exact <laughs> spot it's like five buildings 
is down from the bar. Yeah. Um, <laughs> that area is really interesting. That that part of town. I when I was first time I went there, I parked down the street and I was walking to the venue, and this dude that looked like I'm not gonna lie, Vanilla Ice, like so much like the not Vanilla Ice. Um, what's Kid Rock? He looked a lot like Kid Rock. He was like he had like the cornrows and he was shirtless and like some just shitty tattoos all over. And he came up to me with me in the Seven Eleven parking lot across the street as I was walking to the venue and goes, "Do you want to play basketball, bro?" And I'm like. <laughs> no man i i don't want to play basketball and he's like uh your lost dog and then like flips me off and walks away i was like oh okay cool. lost dog. <laughs> where's your nearest basketball court like where are you gonna go the ymca that's just yeah cool. <laughs> it was really it was pretty funny i was like all right <laughs> and then i went to the gig and i can't remember who i saw there someone oh behold the monolith from la they were oh, really no. good but you but you couldn't enjoy them because the whole night you were realizing what a loss you had had from not playing basketball right yeah you i could have yeah i could have i could have had the evening of my life with that dude yeah <laughs> you're lost dog <laughs> how Turns I, out it is kid rock yeah how i how i ended up playing <laughs> basketball with who look, appeared to be kid rock parentheses or actually was <laughs> Yeah, he actually is him, and that's why he's like really like, why the fuck would you say no to me? Type thing. Like, yeah, it's a yeah. pretty funny, pretty funny story, kind of similar to that. Like, I think I went to my first Comic Con, like uh, San Diego Comic Con, when I was like fourteen, and it was like way easier for like locals to actually get in. Like, people would just trade each other like their their badges to just get in, mm -hmm. and so like I went in with my friend for one of the, like one of the times, and then like my friend was like, "Hey, that looks like Kirk Hammett," and I'm like, "What?" where and then and then this guy that shit you not looked like Kirk Hammett but had like <laughs> sunglasses and a hat on and he was like behind you and then he like we looked at him and he walked by and then we were like what the fuck like that looked like Kirk Hammett and then he like disappeared he like disappeared into the crowd it, it was definitely Kirk Hammett it definitely was it, yeah. it couldn't have not been <laughs> there, there's that website it's like the what what's the flight tracker there's Kirk tracker dot com <laughs> you can see his location at any time <laughs> google Maps. i uh him, like, i i weird. love like the the stupid links that the internet goes to with like metal memes they just get obsessed with like one person at a time and then just make a million memes like do you remember the whole um danzig phase yeah that, not that phase not over i yet. don't think that's even that's oh no it, yeah <laughs> i think i I haven't seen it in a minute. Like it used to be like all the time. There was constantly it, like the funniest thing ever was when that person hijacked his account. Oh, Do you guys remember that? I don't think so. I haven't heard that. Oh, go Google it. Uh, Cause you can find the images and they posted like all these really poorly made memes of pictures of him with like shitty writing across them saying like, I am gay and stuff like really dumb stuff. And like, I, I, I eat hot dogs covered in jizz and like, and he was so angry. He got the account back and he's posting like, whoever this is, I will find you and kill you. And so it was, oh, it was pretty, fuck. yeah, it was pretty funny. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I remember for a while, like, well, when I was in college, there was just like a lot of like, com the, what was that comics? I remember we were talking about this uh, Glenn, a couple of years Glenn ago. And, Glenn and uh, Henry. Glenn and Henry forever or something like that. Henry and Glenn forever. Yeah. Yeah. When that, when they have that comic strip of like the homoerotic romance between like, Danzig and Henry Rollins. Have you guys seen seen those? Ones? <laughs> no, I haven't seen that. Yeah, if you just yeah, if you Google like Glenn and Henry Forever, someone just made actually. I, I recently saw someone made AI images of the book. <laughs> uh, it's, it's scandalous, you know. It's pretty funny. <laughs> okay, I'm looking that up after this. I did not yeah. know that existed. Yeah, please do. Hey, going back, going back to the that that the. The area where till two club is like i know we're talking mm. about food and stuff but like oh man in that area is like one of the best like vietnamese if not just in general vegan restaurants in in the u.s or in general oh. yeah what's yeah. it called it's like tin tan chai and okay they you'll know it when you walk in because of its green walls huh. and their food is freaking excellent if you guys ever have a chance to to hit that spot up like you definitely should i definitely will i uh i love vietnamese food so i'm always down to try something there sweet mm -hmm. what other yeah. uh just for anyone listening when I mean, we're on the topic of food let's talk food uh what other places would you recommend in san diego if someone's visiting oh fuck yeah yeah I, i'm i'm pretty foodie like as fuck like i love 
checking out different <laughs> spots of, of all kinds. If you're going to go to Kearney, um, go to Hinotes, uh, the spot I was mentioning earlier. It's just all around good Japanese food. <clears throat> mm -hmm. They have um, they have a lot of they have ramen. They have a yakitori menu. They have like a, a pretty cool mm -hmm. cocktail menu as well. And and um, Yokohama yakitori kobo. It's so it's a it's like a like a authentic uh, Japanese yakitori spot that serves the best Asahi uh, beer nice. on tap. Um, if you want Thai food, Kun Thai is really good. It's in the same plaza as, um, oh man, I'm trying to think. It's, it's across from the Carl's Jr. on Convoy. Um, oh, I know the place. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Uh, I'm actually getting a tattoo done in that pile the next month. Oh, that's the tattoo shop next to Karami Ramen, isn't it? Yeah. yeah that's the one. Yeah. That spot's also really good, Karami Ramen over there. Okay, I, have, I haven't had that, so I'll try that before the tattoo. <laughs> yeah, the interior is really freaking cool. It reminds me of like just like a little shop, like a little ramen shop that would be in Tokyo. And yeah, they they make the ramen really good. Their chicken karaage, the fried chicken, is really good over there. Oh, nice. Awesome. If you're down for uh, if you're down for Filipino food, go to Tita's Kitchenette in National City um some of the best servings of filipino food and just it's fucking grease loaded so just prepare to bring like fucking tums or something but yeah, <laughs> yeah okay. I, I gave I, I showed these guys like some filipino food from titas and i've been going there ever since i was a kid and like yeah you can't go wrong with that it's super huge portions for what you're paying for like yeah i, I think though if, if someone's visiting in my humble opinion mm -hmm. We're talking taco shops. This is oh. San Diego's secret power. Yes. This is, this is the greatest thing about, you know, the, the up there, greatest thing about this town. Save it. Now, what taco that. shops? Oh, fuck yeah. Damn. Well, I feel like Tacos El Gordo would be like a general place, a good place to take people that want to mm -hmm. try yeah. TJ Tacos without going to TJ. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. Yeah, and Taquero Revo Revolucion is also kind of on par with it. Some people say the Arubara at uh, Tacos El Gordo is way better than than Taqueria Revolucion. The Arubara at Gordo is supposed to be the best. It's the best, yeah. Yeah, so there's Tacos El Gordo. There's Brothers in North Park. Yeah, That's all, my, recomm all yeah. my recommendations are going to be in North Park, but uh, I guess fortunately or unfortunately, a lot of people that are visiting tend to go there now. So, uh, yeah, Brothers. Yeah, if you're into late night, Kalima's in this kind of the same area. Yeah, or uh, Chicken Pie Shop, if anyone's... If... Uh, yes, love Chicken Pie Shop. I used to live in North Park before I moved out to Kearney Mesa. I okay, was so literally... Know. You know you know the water tower? Yeah, yeah. I was across the street diagonally in that apartment building right there. Oh, oh fuck yeah. Hell. Yeah, and also Pokies too in downtown in East Village. Um, Pokies is a good spot for like vegan, vegetarian, Mexican food options. They also have they have a full range of non-vegan options too. Yeah. So po yeah, Pokies is pretty legendary. The better option. Uh, yeah. <laughs> that's like the yeah, that's that's like a mecca for some people. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, it's pretty rooted in in San Diego community. Yeah, a lot. Have you have you been there, James? Uh which one is it? Pokies? Pokies. Yeah. Let me see. I don't know if I have, but it's in uh downtown San Diego. Yeah, East Village. It's on 10th and 10th, E? 10th and E. Yeah. I'm yeah. looking up a picture. Nope, haven't had that one. So that's, you recommend that one? Yeah, oh, sure. it's, it's been, it's it's owned by, I don't actually, I, I don't know who owns it, but Pokey. I know that, po, yeah, po, no, Pokey works there. Yeah. Um, But they had there, if you go in, there's a bunch of, I don't know, maybe they took them down, but there's pictures of like, I don't know if, if it was Rock from the Crypt or maybe it was, it was even Pitchfork, like there are bands that, you, like, I think the Locusts have played in there before huh. and. So it's a venue as well. Yeah, they don't do as many. I don't think they do so many shows these days. But back in, you know, I think starting in the 90s, they would have shows there. Huh. And so that's it's, really cool. And it's a yeah, shop. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it has so it has ties to punk and, you know, it's a really it's, one of the places that encapsulates San Diego. Yeah. If you're a punk. Yeah, it's a staple. OK, I've got a couple of spots that I really dig as well. Um, have you guys had the food truck the seafood la 57 no where's that uh south park in the target parking lot it's always there oh, yes i've and, been there oh, okay yeah. Yeah, yeah that one's phenomenal like you do the marlin or the octopus um they got so many different options it's it's awesome 
Um, the, and then the trucks oh, sorry, are where, I was just gonna say the, the trucks are where it's at. Yes. Taco truck. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah. Hundred percent. There's mm-hmm. another one, another really good truck uh, across the road from Chick Fil A in Mission Valley. Mm, really? Tacos. It's always there. Yeah, always. Yep, tacos. It's a blue truck. Uh, it's like cheap as all hell, but amazing and big portions. Uh, it's all seafood, I think, from memory. But yeah, it's uh, when you're, you know, that there's like the Chick Fil A in that parking lot. Just uh, I'm trying to think near Cookies, the dispensary. You know that is. Mm. Uh, I actually don't know. You know, Mission think... Valley is huge, kind of, and it so is I'm massive. Not... Yeah, I don't know where the Chick Fil A yeah. is, but I will look for it now. Uh, if you can't find the Chick Fil A, it's also across the street from uh, Food for Less. Oh, okay, I know where that is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, yep, yep, right there. That's excellent. And yeah. I, I, there's this place we found recently uh, near us in Kearney Mesa, tucked away in this little back street called California Burritos. Oh, Mario that's, loves that spot. Yeah, it's that's, good, man. That's the yeah. best. That's my favorite fish burrito in town. Oh shit! Okay, okay. They Speak got like of- the, the they got the ratio perfect between sauce salad and actual fish because sometimes it's a little much or it's a little dry yeah yeah that's that's the challenge with a with a fi- fish like like a fish taco kind of yeah thing. it can't like be just, too wet but it can't be too dry yeah right. and some, like some places have them grilled and then some places have them fried and then sometimes the breading's like there's a little too much breading in it right exactly yeah the breading can make it if it's way too much breading it's just it doesn't taste right yeah the question is, what is better? Is it is breaded or or grilled in a Ooh. breaded? Breaded. I think grilled. breaded. Fish burrito or fish taco? Fish burrito. Fish burrito. Fish burrito. Because yeah, I've had a grill. I've had a grilled fish burrito, and that shit was good. That was from El Pollo Grill. It was pretty. Yeah, good. burrito. I don't know. Taco. I say grilled burrito. I could go. I'd rather have like probably. a like a like a a fish sandwich, but not fried. Like a grilled fish sandwich? Yeah. Dang. That actually does sound good. It's like <laughs> mahi. No tortilla. Mahi, yeah. Air dog. No, I'm, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and the, the, the last place I, I almost forgot to mention is the Vallarta Express. Have you guys ever been to that one? Now, there's... So, my wife loves a particular Vallarta Express. She likes the one in... It's up in, like rb black mountain or something like that oh like, okay Bernardo. she says that that's like yeah black that's mountain. like the best one so i don't know if you've uh, w- i don't know which ones you've been to uh i've only been to the one that's just off balboa it's like uh by that uh across from like the walgreens it's like a marshalls and stuff there oh okay yeah yeah i i don't know if we've had that one so maybe that one's but yeah that one they're they have really good salsa yeah they so do have good salsa but the thing that I get every time and like people with that's so weird, but it's so good is the um, Buffalo burrito. Yeah. Go on. Tell me more about this. What? <laughs> it's Buffalo chicken burrito. Oh, so the, the chicken's like spice cooked in like Buffalo sauce. Then they yeah. put it as in like it's a Buffalo salad. So you have like the romaine hearts in there and then they cover it in Buffalo sauce and ranch. And that's the inside of the burrito. Hmm. I'm I've skeptical. made a similar kind of burrito, but I put um, jalapeno poppers and like some salsa in it. Yeah, were you high? That's good. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Sounds like something you'd make if you're high. Yeah, that definitely is. Yeah. <laughs> I made a chicken wing burrito. <laughs> like, yeah. like the whole ass of chicken wings. <laughs> yeah, I didn't take the bones out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I like the crunch. <laughs> <laughs> you you teeth all missy. You smile, your teeth are all missy. Yeah. <laughs> what about um what about beer for you guys? Do you have any favorites around here? Cold, cheap, plentiful. Oh wait. More. Uh <laughs> <laughs> I, I love sours. I've been getting on I've been getting on sours lately. Like modern time sour is really good. Fruitland sour. Mm-hmm. I've been doing that. I generally like sours. The only bad, really bad sour I've had since I got here was at Belching Beaver. And it was like one of the worst beers I've had in my life. Really? Yeah. I, I don't know what flavor it was because sour massively depends on what you make it out of. Like what, what the base is. I don't know. Whatever it was, was just, it was like five times more sour than any sour should have been. There was like no redeeming sweetness or like beer taste. It was just like a punch oh. in the mouth. 
I hate so that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Sometimes yeah. Yeah, when sours are bad, they like start to like kind of resemble puke a little too much. Yeah. You know, <laughs> yeah. like it's what kind of sours like y'all it. drinking, man? That's nasty. I, I, well, I'm not drinking. Well, I, I have, but it wasn't. You know, I didn't do it. I didn't drink two. Okay. That that belching <laughs> beaver tasted like beaver belch. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I think so. Like the best, my favorite bars in town are Red Wing because that's my that's my. Nice. That's my the local, that's my neighborhood spot. And it's stayed kind of, I don't know, it's been it's kind of been trapped in a bubble in a good way. Whereas mm-hmm. so much of North Park has changed. And there's a lot of great stuff, but um and then Aero Club. If I don't know if you've ever been to Aero Club. Is that in the same area? No, that's in uh, Mission Hills. It's kind of if you're at Casbah and you went north along the five. If you know, there's also Shakespeare's over there, kind of. Oh, I've been to Shakespeare's a bunch of times. That's a good pub. Um, yeah. But I, I have not been to this one. I'm looking it up now. It looks pretty sweet. Yeah, that's a that's a great spot. Uh, biggest, like, whiskey selection. I mean, I know you asked about beer, but. No, that's uh, fine. Yeah, whiskey's like, good. Bourbon's yeah, whiskey's good. good. <laughs> they have, like, 400 different types of whiskey. Oh, wow. Uh, looking at the not, pictures. Yeah, wow. and it's and it's not, it's not, like, some whiskey places are a little prim and proper or something yeah yeah um uppity aero, aero club's not that way at all. they're just it's just a it's like a rad dive bar with and they just happen to have stadium seating for whiskey yeah i mean this is a this looks like a really cool bar I love, and the pinball machines this looks awesome oh yeah and solid jukebox it's a, yeah it's great great spot mm-hmm. all right that's on the list um uh-huh. wow and of and of course, fall brewing. Yeah, also. fall brewing is a good spot. That I've been to. That is good. Yeah, I do like going to Bottle Craft in North Park or Little Italy. I I just like having a selection of like cans and bottles to choose from. Oh yes, yeah. stuff. Yeah. Have you been to um, Arizona Cafe in uh, Ocean Beach? No, that place is sweet. It's like full on dive bar i've closed it out at like 2 a.m on a wednesday before and the people are oh. like something else it's awesome um <laughs> it used to be a bowling alley historically and so it's this weird shaped bar um with like a full wraparound square bar and the drinks are really cheap but it's it's, it's fun it's got a jukebox so you can attach your phone to the app and pick your own song so i get cued into like the bar's playlist type thing that's yeah yeah unless you're at the bar with like somebody who has is very set on listening to something that you don't want to listen to. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Like, never made it as a wise man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and you're pumped because it could be worse. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that sounds sick. Yeah. I also yeah, it's like- got pool tables too. Oh, sorry. Oh, pool over. tables over there? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think in terms of like like divey spots, I really liked Star Bar. Like oh, over in town. Yeah. Have you been to Star Bar? I don't think so. It doesn't sound familiar. Let's see. Star Bar. In it, it, it with downtown being what it is, it is an anomaly. There's like there's like three places downtown that are not gas lampy. One of them is Star Bar. One of them is Tivoli. Tivoli. And the other one is Cha Cha. Chi Chi. Chi Chi Club. I have Chi-chi. not been to Star Bar. Yeah, Star Bar. Oh, it's... it's pretty cool. They have like a pool table. They have like a pretty pretty basic menu like it's a mixed crowd it can either be like really really packed in there or like totally dead. totally dead tivoli i have been to and what was was that the third what was one? The other body mission it's called chi chi club chi chi club now, yeah chi chi is a fun time but just be careful uh i've might have found glass in a drink once oh okay but, I, <laughs> but hey but i'm here i'm fine <laughs> <Pretty sure. laughs> uh, yeah. that's rough man the, yeah. the glass didn't the glass didn't ruin my personality that was my problem <laughs> <laughs> that was like a person just, yeah. yeah the glass <laughs> maybe fixed it yeah it fixed your head <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah those those three places in downtown are, are the least downtown if, if you're looking if you're you know if, if you're with friends or you're going around and you're like oh let's find something chiller those are chiller mm-hmm. yeah I don't mind uh, Werewolf either. That can that's like depending on who's there and like what the music's like. That can be pretty chill too. The food's pretty good. Werewolf. Yeah. Have you, have you been to that one? Oh, I haven't. It's oh. like it's just a normal kind of bar. It's just no like gimmick or anything. They 
just do like a bunch of like uh you can get like really good nachos and like uh hush puppies and a bunch of other finger food and stuff and then they have decent drinks on tap and there's a big jukebox you can digitally choose as well so it's not bad that's in downtown yeah yeah i I rarely i rarely find myself in well actually lately i've been finding myself over in downtown but like because i I have a studio over there that i that i've been building over the past couple years but i I also work over at the coin op in the gas lamp like yeah like i do line cooking during the summer like when i'm not um doing like my substitute teaching and stuff hell yeah nice nice i used to be a chef that was fun times oh heck yeah yeah it's rowdy it's a rowdy old yeah it is it is <laughs> how long were you doing that uh god 17 years i did it and then uh covid killed my job and then i took some time off and then i got in the brewing industry oh nice yeah what kind of stuff so, were you making like what what kind of foods were you were you making like during um that? i worked um for the max restaurant group um mainly at um they had a burger concept restaurant like did all kinds of crazy burgers and all kinds of sides and wild stuff and then um catering every once in a while and things like that or if they needed help at another restaurant i'd pop in and cover some shifts whatnot <clears throat> that was cool Dang, it's like a jack worked at a uh the last uh, before I left them, I was working at uh, a place. Uh, it was like a high-end steak restaurant concept that they had, and uh, it was uh, attached to the uh, basketball hall of fame. So it was cool. <laughs> Got a lot of, lot of, a uh, lot of business there. Oh yeah. What's your favorite kind of steak? And like, uh, at, at what, like, at what level? Of, like, oh man, uh, I like. Uh, I guess if I could, I like fillet. Man, I always order fillet when I go out. Nice you know yeah. nice mid rare fillet i can just like cut it like butter and yeah oh yeah i like uh i like ribeye yeah ribeye is good too ribeye is easier to cook professionally than it is you know like oh man tenderloin could be a pain in the ass sometimes oh, takes so long dang do you guys like korean barbecue yeah i like it yes. my wife isn't a major fan of it so i don't get out to it as often but there's a couple spots that do it and it's pretty good. Love it. Love it. This a uh, place where you go to all the time is Ole. Ole? Yeah, it's uh I think it's O L E. Oh, okay. It's uh it only opened like last year, but it's like really good Korean barbecue and cheaper than mana. Oh, really? Yeah. It's Where's right next to mana. mana. Oh, yeah, in convoy? Yeah, right like in the same parking lot complex as mana barbecue. I've tried both and I actually think I might have preferred Ole, even though it's cheaper. Good to know. Oh yeah, there's a really good curry spot in that same plaza. This that whole area, man, you can't really go wrong. You can just kind of pick something and and try it. And it's gonna be decent, probably. Seriously, it's like no shortage of freaking food spots over here. Yeah, yeah. Have you ever have you ever tried that new place that opened? I I haven't had it yet. Called uh, Flama Llama. Flama Llama? No. <laughs> it's uh, Asian South American fusion what the heck it yeah. sounds like my kids book i used to read like llama llama rotten pajama whatever you know <laughs> <laughs> or is your mama a llama like <laughs> I hope you remember that book you guys just reminded me do you remember that song uh, you know there's that there were two that were german and there was one that was like schnappy does klein a crocodile and the other one was uh, Das Lama in Oklahoma. Yokohama? Yeah, the, the Lama. It's in German. It's like the Lama in Oklahoma. Or das Lama in Oklahoma. It's, uh, <laughs> do you guys not remember? They were on, uh, maybe it wasn't in America. I, as I, I was in New Zealand growing up at the time. And it was on the radio. <laughs> yeah, like, it was on the radio like every day. It was like a, a top hit. It was, it was at the same time in, in, in human evolution as the uh, Crazy Frog song. Oh wow, that's funny. Mm. Now I, I feel like um, I just that's a, that's a weird no. point for the <laughs> main, mainstream music. We had like Crazy Frog, those, and like the Hamster Dance song in the hits, and I was like, "What's happening?" Is Crazy Frog the the commercial with the cell phone? And am I? Oh, was that the, the? I'm not going to try and imitate it because that would be like 
devastating publicly but it's like <laughs> look at look <laughs> google crazy frog after after this call and see like one of the most annoying things that was ever made uh he has like goggles and he's like writing yeah 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 yeah, yeah. And, and he's like, 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 he's like yeah yeah, yeah 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 and that was like playing for like years and then it was like after those died down it was like gunyam style it was called oh jeez oh, Kind of like the beginnings of like these little, sort of like viral kinds of meme kind of things. Yeah. Yeah. And then uh, what was the other one? What does the fox say? Hmm. What does the fox God, say? God, I'm, I'm that so song? happy. I missed the boat on that with my kids. Like, oh, yeah. Oh, woo, I dodged a bullet, man. Did you dodge baby shark or is that in full force or what? Uh, no, that was like <laughs> a very small, small portion, but it was uh, with my youngest. Yeah. But he's he's out of that now. We're good. <laughs> we cleared it. Yeah, we're cleared. Gra- and now gra- it's just like fun stuff it. like Sonic the Hedgehog and like Captain Underpants and things like that, you know. So dang, Captain Underpants has staying power, like straight up. Yeah, I love reading those books. They're great. They're funny. There's like humor in there. It's 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 great. It's great. Just like tearing those pages from all of those like little animations that you can do like at the end of the book. No, oh, yep, yep. The flipperamas. Yeah, those are so cool. Yeah. Every time we get to them, my son's always like, all right, let me hold it. Let me hold it. And I was like, all right, I got you. <laughs> and he, uh, it's so funny. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Do you guys play video games? Yeah, yeah I a do. A little bit, yeah. What are you doing, Alex? Like, what are you going up to? The new Zelda? Played, oh nice played, played a lot of the zelda yeah we're we're all pat's not here our bases but we're all uh pretty we we learned pretty soon after the band started that we're all video game dorks yeah uh and so yeah pat got me into to the last zelda a couple of years ago and then the new one came out so had to spend like two months of my life on that uh and then i don't know lots of sort of stuff i'm waiting for the elden ring dlc to come out all right you know what i haven't played that yet and i've heard a lot of good stuff about it it's it's if you like have you played dark souls or any of those games i um uh, played one time like a while ago i haven't like got into that one yet either i was more into like i played destiny a lot and halo and those kind of yeah. games and then like i was uh been playing a lot of like the pixelated kind of dungeon crawler games Oh, sick. Like old RPG, kind of like th- throwback style. Yeah, they're like um, where you like you start off on a level and you like get a basic weapon and this and that and then you die and then you start at the very beginning. And then as you keep progressing, you pick up better, better stuff and collecting it and you die. and You start at the very beginning every time you die and you have to make your way all the way through. Um, there's, there's one called like uh, fuck, it's on it's on like the Steam. I got. It's on the Steam Dead deck. Cells. That's the one I've been playing. Dead Cells. No, this one's called like Vampire Killer or something like that. Oh, it's Vampire. Like... I've been playing that as well. Yeah. You it's know, uh, I... Survivors. Vampire yes. Survivors. Yeah, it yeah, is, yeah. It just automatically fires like the, the weapons for you and you basically just maneuver all these like hoarding enemies at you. Yeah, I, I remember it for like I, I played it a little bit and I it, it's tricky because I, I kept dying and I I text this this guy that I had met. I was like, do I just suck at this or is there like a skill thing to it? He's like, oh, no, you get better at it. But it's also possible you just suck too. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Yeah. Well, I mean, like, you too. pick up like certain things and then um, you'll notice like some of them will have like a little symbol from a different kind of like a whatever magic power or weapon or whatever it may be. And they'll yeah. complement each other. So then you'll be able to upgrade it to like a, like this thing. So like there's this one thing I love to try and get is called garlic when I'm playing it because it puts out this big aura around you and it won't let stuff in to touch you. And then if you like upgrade it with, I can't remember what it was, but something else you like that you also just keep upgrading that. And then it turns the garlic into this black abyss that everything just gets sucked into and it pumps your life up. So then you can just like basically like you could sit still and everything would just come at you and you wouldn't get touched, you know, that kind of stuff. But it's, but you have to figure out like how to upgrade it. <laughs> then, yeah, I'll, I'll be looking for garlic when I go to play next. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. Sounds Definitely good. get the garlic. Yeah. 
yeah I've, I've been liking like those like downloadable like arcadey kind of games on like playstation network and stuff yeah, yeah. I, forget, I forget the names of them but they have like this sort of like 80s like arcadey quality but like ha they have like super cool graphics or like cool music and stuff i kind of just tune out for for a little while playing those hell yeah yeah but uh i uh oh go ahead oh i'm just saying zelda is zelda is what i've been on breath of the wild I uh, I got my son a uh, switch not too long ago. Well, he earned it. So, um, but I was like, oh man, I don't have any games for this thing, and I have access to this, and I love Zelda. So I'm thinking about diving into that. Maybe, maybe I'll do it this winter. Yeah, it, it'll be when when it's for you when it's snowy outside. It'll be good. It'll be good. Yeah, thing. yeah. For for us, it's like sunny all the time. So you know, just pick yeah. whatever feel like it and go for it because it does. <laughs> i know it doesn't matter yeah gotta be right, right. It gets too sunny <laughs> i've just been playing uh it's kind of kind of boring but the uh total war strategy games yes. i uh attila attila total war the monk the one with all the uh the huns involved invading from e the east type thing and uh then like, i listen to history podcasts while i play it so <laughs> Sounds like a good time. It's great. <laughs> right up my alley. But it, it's really funny because the history podcast I was listening to synced up events wise with the game. So I was like, oh, well, that was like completely unplanned. Which 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 history podcast do you listen to? Because I'm always looking for new ones. I have a few, but I've been listening to one called uh let me just make sure I have the name right. It's called the British History Podcast, and it's the history of uh Britain from prehistory till now huh not heard That's of that pretty cool I'm it goes like right through the the, the pre the pre-celtic area uh, era the celtic era then the romans then through the saxons and this keeps going right through till present day nice you know as a as a red-blooded american i generally refrain from learning about you in uk history <laughs> <laughs> you have to know your enemy to defeat them though so uh. <laughs> But they can't swim this far. <laughs> <laughs> cool. That sounds that sounds good. Uh, there's another really good one. Uh, what's it called? Um, History on Fire. Have you ever heard of that guy? No, I haven't heard that one. There's a, this so, there's so many. Oh, wait, no. They're all they're all excellent. There's another. There's actually if you want American history though, there's a really good one called Rejects and Revolutionaries. Rejects and Revolutionaries. It's the history of the U.S. from like the Tudors through to today and it kind of talks like how the American identity was shaped and what events like caused Americans to be the way they are like how different they are to English people type thing so it's wow. just the evolution of America basically historically and culturally as a red-blooded American I don't like to learn about American history either thank you very much <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I actually went to the I actually went to the USS Midway recently speaking of That's like cool. that kind of yeah, yeah. The, la the last time I the last time I went, I was subbing for a fifth grade, I believe a, th a third grade or a fifth grade class. And um, I came to the school that I, I was subbing at and they kind of like laid it on me like, hey, do you want to sub for a field trip? I'm like, yeah, that sounds like it'll be fun. And what I ended up, that last time what ended up happening was like this kid tried jumping off of the flight deck because oh. like, he, yeah, he had he 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 had some. He, he had some um uh like a like special needs like behavioral special needs and okay. uh yeah he, he was like running away from his mom and stuff and i'm like yo <laughs> he tried jumping off like hey uh where's so and so and like oh yeah we had an incident uh we may have to uh <laughs> we may have to like delay our bus ride and we ended up getting there at four i thought i was gonna have to file like a police report but the principal ended up doing that anyway. So they're like, yeah, you can just leave. Just left. <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah. This, but but the most recent time we went, like I, I went to uh, Torrey Pines with my girlfriend and like we saw this guy driving up like the, the walkway with like an, a Toyota MR2. And that's like mm -hmm. my favorite freaking car. And so like I was taking when we got to the top, we were hanging out over there and like we we go to that parking lot and we see that MR2. And so I'm like snapping pictures of it and stuff. And then like this guy comes up and he's like, he's like, hey, should I dust it off for you? Like to, to like make it better? Like it was like the owner of the uh, car. He he like gave us a full on tour of like his car. And it was like so clean, like stock. Hell yeah. 
everything was stock like he had like cassette tapes like stored in like the seat console like he he had it decked out and he he enjoyed the con like we enjoyed the conversation with him and he was like all right i'll give you tickets to the midway and we just like checked it out and like i didn't it didn't really dawn upon me that that was the actual fucking uss midway from the battle of the midway like yeah yeah like what the heck i thought it was like you don't realize that you're like what the heck this is like a full-on like famous ship yeah, yeah like, that, that ship's a, that ship's a veteran man yeah yeah yeah, they did the uh, Top Gun premiere on top of that, I believe, like Top Gun Two. They did, yeah. And like Tom Cruise, like helicoptering or something, and then there were jets. <laughs> he does his own stunts, man. You know, he does. Me, I also don't think he's human because he hasn't aged in like three decades. It's like it's all the Scientology juice that they keep at the church. <laughs> yeah, <Yep. laughs> have like a special juice that like is loaded with what are they called like thetans thetans yeah you have to reach yeah. the right level it has to be the right level though you have to level up to a certain point to get the juice yeah yeah, yeah. the the interesting thing is i actually know the juice recipe to that there you go i'm i'm oh, i'm willing to div- divulge it it's, i wouldn't say that on on air well i'm honest. gonna they're, they can't they're listening don't tread on me guys <laughs> <laughs> it's 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 gatorade and and uh emergency okay i said it i can't take it back now it's out there dang so gatorade <laughs> <laughs> the pd light and a dash of mountain dew code red and a tapeworm hey speaking of speaking of drink recipes like um i've been i've been making this drink pretty often very recently uh like I've, I've been getting in the habit of just like mixing just random stuff that I find at the liquor store. And yeah. so like there's a liquor store in National City, like near where I live, that they have like all of this good. It's like a liquor store proper. It's like there's more liquor and beer and different drinks than there are snacks or food items. And yeah. so like like I went in there and I got uh, like grape soju, like the Jinro, the Korean so- uh, soju. So I got uh, so I got that. I got uh black cherry white claw and then there's this drink called electrolyte um it's kind of like a it's either you could switch it out but it's either electrolyte or celsius and so you you just like mix the 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 ginro you mix the celsius and or electrolyte and then you put white claw like on the top all on ice and i i i'd fill like a 20 ounce jug like that and then we would just like bring it to like the zoo or whatnot and it's like it's pretty <laughs> Can, damn yeah, have you uh guys, have you have you heard of uh like the iv bars id bars iv like you go oh. to this place and you like say you're like oh i want like a pre hangover cure or whatever and then they'll you'll sit there for like whatever 20 minutes and they'll put an iv into you and they'll pump you full of freaking nutrients yeah, like a drip yeah yeah i've seen that i've seen i've not partaken in one i i feel like uh, last time i was in vegas i think whatever the hotel we were at like it, i saw it on you know uh some pamphlet that was around uh i can't tell does that seem that feels sketchy and weird to me yeah <laughs> yeah 100 yeah, they're opening like a... one up down the street from um the brewery uh, so what, oh yeah so it's like hey c- cruise here before you go to the brewery like you'll you'll oh, thank you maybe yeah I don't know, man. Do you remember when the oxygen oxygen bars were a thing for a while there? Like a little bit, there was oxygen bars. I was thinking about that too. It's like flavored oxygen and stuff. It's yeah. like pure oxygen or whatever. That that is a dystopian concept. <laughs> oh yeah, no doubt about it. Like, hmm, yeah. t- you can taste clean. Yeah. Air, you know, wasn't it like <laughs> Biodome or something like that? that Freaking Polly Shore movie. They were like going to start selling fucking canned air and shit i i feel yeah. like i've heard that in in some of the more like heavily polluted areas of china that's like act more of a thing i could be totally like misled on that but because of the pollution like people get like as a novelty maybe i don't know yeah i don't like it uh it just I, makes I you think of blade runner yeah totally like blade runner 2 like the the open the <laughs> first part of the movie when they're on the the big like a uh, big cityscape and it's all just ruined buildings and gross air and stuff it's yeah 
yeah the, the fact that that exists means like society we we got it we got to do something else <laughs> yeah <laughs> not going the right way uh, this there's a lot of dystopian stuff lately it's with uh like online just with i don't know some of it's from ai and some of it's just like social media stuff but some of it's like is this really what our species has like come to now yeah rain and i were talking about that earlier today and and the limits of ai and what is it gonna where will it go and who you know how will it change because obviously it, things will change because of it um yeah and hopefully we were talking about how we've gone we've come this far where you know we have all this cr- incredible technology that we didn't have even a hundred years ago and and but we also like just don't know how to use it and i feel like our yeah. lizard brains are there it's trying to like use you know uh telecommunications in the same way that like oh look my spear is bigger than yours i'm gonna fuck you up you know right it's like, yeah it's kind of like the tech as the technology advances we're still exhibiting like the same tribal and primitive nature in, in terms of how how we treat each other i think a there's whole. a reason for that though because like if you look at the rest of history the speed of progress of technology and you know technological evolution it was much more gradual um yeah like the jumps for the lot you know there's like ages we can kind of look like okay well this point and this point that's where something really big that changed like society happened like farming was discovered or like industrial revolution type thing right. there's, a, there's like massive points between that but now it's like massive changes in technology overnight and it's like bam 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 every year there's something huge that changes like the world completely and i think uh, you know culturally we're not keeping up with the technology change because we don't have time yeah right and you know we're mentioning even just how like you know kids are and i don't have kids so i maybe i'm not a good source for this but it seems like kids they like phones and ipads and stuff and but if they like screens they like, screen, like yeah. screens it's like screen, it doesn't yeah, matter exactly. what it is right mm-hmm. um and you know if if like adults don't know how to like or society handle doesn't know how to handle it doesn't know how to moderate it, it then like how do how do you explain it to like younger people who like definitely don't know how to handle it or or understand it you know i don't know mm-hmm. it's it's one of those things as well where it's like social media was the genies out of the bottle before they even had time to look at legislating it so it's it's like once it's out it's kind of hard to to put it back in yeah yeah especially like with how with how vapid a lot of things can be like online and stuff and i have i have i don't have kids either but i do have firsthand experience from like working in education for 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 a number of years and i'm just seeing just like a gra- a gradual shift of just the sort of like this disconnect through this heightened increase of and this increase of this, this like all this connection and a lot of foundational shit is is missing i was even telling i was talking to alex about that like earlier on it's just like even just like sort of basic you know ways that we treat other people like self-awareness and kind, kinds of things so, sort of like the, the the sheer access and how how fast things are everything everything's moving like with how kids are very adaptable and able to keep keep up with that like their their minds are always geared towards kind of like what I've been noticing is like geared towards like the next time they get to go on the screen, like next time they get to go on the tablet, next time they get to take out the, the laptop. That's why they have so many problems with like uh, anxiety and depression, though, because it's like constant dopamine rush that they get from the, the screens and the social media. And then when they not have it, it's just it's withdrawal like any other drug. It's like an addiction. Totally. Mm-hmm. And and like, yeah, uh, no one or we all have not kids are having a problem, but like everyone had like is having this issue. Problem. Yeah, exactly. And you know, it was designed like to keep you engaged and like press every reward button in your brain, you know? Yeah. So I guess like good job. You did it. <laughs> <laughs> For what, at what cost? Like, you know, society as, as a whole, <laughs> uh, there's a movie, there's a documentary called, um, what was it? The social dilemma. Have you guys seen mm-hmm. that one? Oh yeah, yeah. I that, watched it. That one was like opening about like how they literally designed it to be like addictive. That was the yep. whole point of it. That's yeah, like the- they were like never let like the automatic stuff start playing, man. It's gonna 
like just suck it in and like algorithms and all this stuff like it forces you like i don't know i feel like that's how like they created like political wars you know what i mean totally mm -hmm. but, but also like our generation at least had time before it came to this so we developed a lot of those social, like you know those other skills and life experiences away without the screens being involved in every aspect of our life but i feel, I feel bad for this generation they never had the chance to do that yeah just like plugged right in kind of yeah. thing from birth, yeah, basically <clears throat> i even remember just growing up and like going to the computer lab it's such a freaking big ass deal like oh we're going to the computer lab and yeah. like just go there and i'm like playing like minesweeper i'm like this is the best like oh yeah, yeah. you know <laughs> but now, yeah. I, I didn't have a computer till I was like 13 or something. And then, no, not 13. Um, <coughs> I, I didn't have a phone until I was 13. I didn't have a computer till I was like seven or eight. Um, but the home computer was like, you know, it wasn't mine. It was the whole household's. Mm -hmm. That's, yeah. I remember like, yeah, I think I was like 18. I got a phone, you know, it was like end of high school. I didn't have a phone in high school. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I don't know. She was weird. Mm -hmm. I got a phone freshman year and I quickly took to, took to texting and playing Tetris. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, didn't, I had Snake. Yeah, Snake. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's a really a hard game. game. Yeah, that game is super hard. Yeah, some of the kids, like, like uh, I, I remember uh, for a while, like different kinds of games kind of make their way around like students and stuff. So like, like for one week or like two weeks or whatever, or for an extended period of time, they would just be playing a certain game and yeah. like I would catch students playing snake. Like they would just be able to search it up on Google and, and just play with it. And then, and then other times, like I would catch kids on their phone and they would be playing clash Royale. And I'm like, what are you guys <laughs> playing? I'm like clash Royale. And I'm like, what, what the heck is that? So I, I searched it up I downloaded <laughs> it, and I got hooked. Yeah. I don't stop. <laughs> this guy, this guy, you, you don't, you know, you, you're having a conversation. You look away. You don't hear him talking anymore. You look down clash Royale. <laughs> 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 hey um i just noticed we are coming up on time uh brendan did you have any questions you want to ask before we run out um well i guess like playing live shows and whatnot um what's your guys favorite song to play live good question i really like original spirit which uh, is consequently consequently it's gonna be hey we're doing a split we did a split with sweat from la our friends in sweat we uh we just released uh we're going to be releasing a, a two songs each side split and uh OG Spirit is on that is the first song on our side and that one's definitely fun to play I really like that one Egghead off of Echo Planet that one yeah, gets really good thank you yeah dude it's just a challenging song it's a challenging song to like do live and I I like that fact and it's just like it has just enough like danceable parts to kind of just like vibe with the band and 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 feel the groove like really feel it i think my favorite is a toss-up between bad trip or king in vancouver that's those are all good tracks too man bad trip is oh, just yeah. just psycho it just it's fun to play for me because it's like it's two notes the whole time like it's yeah. so it's super i don't have to <laughs> It's nice to not have to like really think about trying to nail all the notes. I'm just like, oh, you just got two, just ping pong between them, and that's yeah. Then I can just kind of actually enjoy and and just be in the moment a little bit more, as opposed to like trying to get every everything in there. So right, right, and, yeah. And then the King of Vancouver is just the uh, uh, if you know it, it's an homage to one of our favorite bands, sorta not not directly, but. Uh, it's also just the one that's the most different, but it has that one's fun. It's, it's the pop jammer, you know? Yeah. 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 It's been it's been really fun, like even just like writing music and just fleshing things out with the guys. It's like it's it's a seamless. It's like a seamless process. We we just bounce ideas off of each other and we really kind of dig in and, and figure stuff out and, and figure out like what what we can do to make the songs like the best they can be if we don't hit all of those marks like on a certain song we always have the next song like we're always kind of in in this like perpetual movement mindset of like what can we do now like what can we throw in there that we haven't done before or is like a, a little spin on something we've we've been doing kind of thing. yeah now i'm not saying we're iron maiden 
<laughs> but I, I really like you know the, like the first four Iron Maiden records. I think they were released like like the first they were released a year apart from each other. Like self titled Killers, uh, Number of the Beast is after that, I think, and then there's one. Uh, no, there's isn't there one before uh, Number oh. of the Beast because it was Killers, and then another one with the original vocalist before Bruce came on, I think. Well, there's oh wait no, there's one before Kill because Paul Deonor does too, self titled and yeah, some yeah. Oh, it's the self-titled and then Killers. And then Killers. And then, yeah. Someone's going to call... Someone's going to call all of us posers, I hope. Yeah. But, I, you know, I got It's third. You're, you're correct. It's 1980 Iron Maiden, 1981 Killers, 1982 Number of the Beast, and then 83 is Peace of Mind. Yeah, yeah. I just thought, like, that's... You know, I feel like bands now, and I get it, like... And maybe it started in like the 90s where you had these two to three, two to like four year album cycles. Uh, and then sometimes like the band sound changed so much because, you know, within four years, people change a lot. Uh, I, I don't know why I'm bringing it up, but I think it's we have that. I think that kind of mindset of like, we just want to keep making stuff quickly because yeah. just keep working. Because like, dude, those first four Iron Maiden, I mean, a, a lot of the Iron Maiden Iron Maiden records even after that are great but like year or is Black Sabbath I think they're the same thing I think they did mm. self dude, did self-titled and Paranoid come out in the same year even you is know it, stuff it, like it that did, when these, yeah yeah like when these bands were just like I don't know they, I, I can't help but think that maybe they didn't overthink it too much they're just like oh is this song cool great let's record it and you know we're done you know it's not this kind of like what I can't help but feel is marketing was like, we we put three years into this record. It's like, dude, you mm -hmm. just couldn't get your shit together for like two years and <laughs> half years. And then like, you know, you someone was like, you got to make a record now. And then in six months, it went from zero to done, you know? And mm -hmm. But the marketing is like, we put so much thought and time into it. It's like, okay, it still sucks, weirdly. <laughs> <laughs> and then Black Side with me while I was jammed in Ozzy's garage and made like, two of the best albums ever in like a 12 month span that's yeah. what i mean you know it's just like they they were just they they were on their path they like found their voice and they they did it yeah that, that's all that's all it is yeah same they, thing they, with flag slip it in and my war like coming out like one after the other yes those two are so good uh but some of those like it was like 1970 1971 uh, like it's like 18 month window they did master reality paranoid and black sabbath that's just insane unreal that's you know cool. like they created heavy metal in like 18 months <laughs> <laughs> yeah, basically <laughs> but in the microwave <laughs> yeah still good <laughs> brendan did wow. you have anything else you want to ask well um what is your favorite hobby outside of music i like going for walks uh, i've been riding my scooter a lot too I like going for rides. I have a 150cc Royal Alloy. All right. GT, yeah, GT 150. Still don't have my license for it, but I've been riding. Yeah, you're practicing. You got to, you know, you got to practice, man. Practice yeah. makes perfect. You know? Yep. Yeah. I think mine is just, just video games, probably, because I nice. got, got the band, but I also um, I record uh, and mix full time. So, it's you know my hobby is video games and or looking on reverb for new gear and hanging out with my wife hell yeah that's yeah. it yeah we're pretty we're simple folk you know <laughs> nothing wrong with that simple record collecting folk <laughs> oh okay quick like question record collecting what record shops do you like in san diego um so i like going to red brontosaurus red brontosaurus is pretty cool uh, vinyl junkies vinyl junkies yeah uh i haven't been in a while but i've been wanting to check it out again folk arts records that place uh, is sweet jupiter records and of course like fucking reanimated records um nick over in la mesa like he he has everything well stocked and like you have a great selection of like so many different styles uh there's m theory feel it records i really like normal records in downtown also mm -hmm. can't so many can't forget two North County staples, standards. which is standards. The other, I'd say that I, there's a lot of punk stores, but I, I feel like reanimated and standards are like San Diego's like punk hardcore places. Mm -hmm. You know, they're from the community. They serve the community. It's great. And then the old, I haven't been in ages, but lose records. 
Blues? No, I haven't been. I don't know if you do they even carry record like I, I remember just going it was all CDs, but mm-hmm. blues because the taco shop down the street's badass. So it's a nice day <laughs> yeah. at the very least. That uh folk arts and rare records, they had for a while there they had what they called the uh dad rock section, which was yeah. just uh boxes of records underneath the stands where the actual records are in. And they were charging a dollar per vinyl, whatever you wanted, for everything in that whole section. And I left there <laughs> with like 36 vinyls or something for like 36 bucks. And it was yeah. awesome. It was such good stuff. Like they had like so much 70s prog stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there's like a there's a lot of like fusion jazz stuff that I really like that like you can find in the bargain bins. Like a lot of like weather report and like I would mm. see like CNN and like stuff like that. A yeah. lot of Ventures records too. I would find a lot of good Ventures records in like the bargain bins and um Cow oh Cow Records and OB is also really sick too. Yeah. I haven't been there. That's true. I haven't been to any of the North County ones. I'm gonna have to check those out sometime. Yeah. They're it's a nice day trip. Mm-hmm. I, I'd also like to yeah. clarify yeah. that I think Steely Dam being in the bargain bin is a mistake. I think they should be in the trash bin. <laughs> wow. <Aww. laughs> Yeah, there you go. There's your controversial. It's not that controversial. It's just the truth. It's not a Michael McDonald's just a sound is a voice of an angel. You're being misled. That's the devil. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, if anyone listens this far on the podcast, you might get some comments. <laughs> come, come at me. I mean, there's that one. Oh, what's okay? There's the one Steely Dan song that my wife got into recently and I was like, okay, this doesn't totally suck, but everything else does totally suck. <laughs> For fans of the doors. For, yeah. <laughs> they all go in the trash bin. I, I, I've become more open-minded as I've gotten older, but uh, you know, you still got to have your, your core and my core is no stealing yet. I understand. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. We're just going to have to wrap up here. So I have two questions there for you. One is going to put you on the spot a little bit, and the other one is super simple. Uh, so the, the more difficult one first is if you were stranded on a desert island and all you had was a solar-powered discman and three CDs until you got rescued, they had to listen to on repeat, what would you want to have? Yeah. Okay. Three albums I can take with me on a deserted island? Uh-huh. Okay. Um, Wu-Tang, Enter 36 Chambers. Great choice. Green, right. Day du- Green Day Dookie. Okay. And No Warning Ill Blood. Awesome. Good mix. Good uh, variety. No uh, warning. I'm going to go Master of Puppets. Okay. Uh, Probably Earth, Bees Made Honey in the Lion's Skull. Ooh. Okay. And the S- LaRue. I think it's a self titled record. Who's, uh, I've never heard of them. Who are they? LaRue. Uh, mm. L A space R O U X. It's this like a okay. uh, lady from England. Yeah, self titled. It, it's like it's just kind of like eighties um, dance pop stuff. And oh, cool! It's a uh, it's a great record. Awesome. Um, okay, so last question is super simple. If people want to buy your album, buy your merch, uh, check you out live, follow you on social media, what are the best places to do all of that? Uh, on Instagram, we're neg- I think it's just at Negative Blast. Um, Negative Blast SD. Negative Blast SD, maybe. That should have links to all our merch and stuff. We're on Big Cartel and Bandcap, too, if you just mm-hmm. Google it. Uh, we're playing some shows coming up. We're playing in Pomona in September with The Bled. Um, yes. We're playing in New York with The Bled again in November, November 10th. And we nice. might have some shows around there playing in la with botch and yeah, we're playing with botch in on december Whoa. 8th. nice where is where's that la nice what venue the the fonda the fonda the fonda the fonda theater yeah with deaf club also so it's like it's that insane show but switch out unsane for botch <laughs> oh, yes yeah. nice. so that's gonna be sick man yeah. yeah yeah so we got a few of those coming up um and then we have the new split with sweat split seven inch coming out officially on august 25th but you can buy it now and you might just get it early fantastic i I don't know when this will come out but you know either way if you buy it you'll get it just i promise (laughs) (laughs) that's a goddamn guarantee (laughs) it's a good slogan for your big cartel 
Yeah, yeah. If you buy it, you'll get it. Yeah, that's a good yeah. guarantee. <laughs> Use our dealership kind of yeah. yeah, that'd be good. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for coming on the show and uh, chatting with us. It was a great time talking with you guys. Hell thank yeah. you so much for having us. Yeah, definitely enjoyed the conversation. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, I, and uh, everyone listening at home, tune in next time. We'll have another guest for you. Yeah, tune in. Let's go.